Hi everybody, in this uh, short video lecture I would like to talk to you about the discovery of a new carbon allotrope at high pressure. And let's start with the obvious question, why carbon and why do we care about finding new allotropes of these elements? Well simply the answer is because carbon is everywhere. If you consider hydrocarbons, you can see that with hydrogen the carbon constitutes the building unit of, uh, of the chains for the fossil fuel we use every day in our cars and our machines. It's also present in most of the medicines we consume very frequently and also it's part of most of materials like polymers. And uh, carbon here is not present only in materials or liquids or uh, devices, I mean things we, we use every day, but also we can, can be found as one of the main constituents of our human body. And uh, some studies have shown that carbon is one of the most abundant elements, not only on Earth, but in our solar system. Well, carbon is important not only because of its abundance in our uh, daily life, in our, uh, in our solar system, but also because of its properties. It covers a very um, large number of uh, interesting properties like density and hardness. That's why we can see a carbon in many uh, small devices and uh, uh, materials we use every day from lead pencils up to battery electrodes. Carbon as an element has, like other um, elements of the periodic table, many um, uh, forms and allotropes. The most famous one, if you look at the phase diagram, are graphite and diamond. Graphite can be uh, crystallized in, the, in its hexagonal form and also in rhomboedral, while the diamond can adopt the cubic one and also can be synthesized in the laboratory as a hexagonal polymorph called lonsdalite. Because of its importance, Many researchers have been working on discovering new uh, phases or new forms of, uh, of this element and extending its allotropy. In the last decades, we have seen the discovery of very interesting phases and unique ones, like the family of filarenes, which has been awarded the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1996. Then came carbon nanotubes. And very recently, two physicists have been awarded the Nobel Prize uh, in, chemistry, in, in physics for the discovery of uh, graphene. Even though carbon is a very abundant element in nature, these new phases like filarenes and carbon nanotubes and graphene are unlikely to be found in nature and need some experimental, specific experimental techniques like epitaxial growth and uh, laser ablation, chemi chemical vapor deposition to be obtained. However, for diamond and uh, graphite, they can be found in nature in the form of deposits, rocks, crystals, meteorites, and uh, many minerals. Well, see, because of the value of uh, diamond and its interesting properties, scientists have been interested since long time in different ways to get it. And the most conventional way to obtain that cubic diamond is when you take graphite and you apply high pressure and you increase the temperature above 1200 Kelvin. Well, some other uh, researchers tried to explore the other way if you apply pressure on graphite while keeping the temperature equal to 300 Kelvin. A group of uh, uh, scientists <coughs> led by Ma Mao uh, performed, conducted this experiment and got uh, a, a super hard phase where all, all carbons are sp3 hybridized. But when you check the x-ray uh, diffraction data and the uh, spectroscopy, especially Raman, th they found out that the, this phase is not diamond. So this phase here has been puzzling experimentalists for many years and has simulated many theoretical efforts in order to predict its correct structure. So we have seen in recent years many theoretical efforts who gave us a large number of uh, predictions. In 2009, a monoclinic polymorph named N-carbon was obtained. Shortly after, another tetragonal phase was proposed as super hard graphite. And these two phases have been followed by a number of, uh, of uh, different candidates for super hard graphite. And I think the easy, easiest way to describe all these structures is to look at them as a combination of uh, odd or even membered rings. So M carbon is 5 plus 7 and the BCT4 is 4 plus 8. We can use this concept and we can mix different uh, rings. You can make pairs like even, 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 odd, or even, odd, even. And we can get like, you can see here on this picture here, 
an infinite number of phases for this um, uh, super hard graphite. And surprisingly, if you look at the diffraction pa um, uh, pattern for all the proposed phases, they all match the uh, experimental XRD1 and they can uh, fairly um, explain it. And this adds more uh, uh, complexity to, to this problem of super hard graphite. So in, in a case like we have a known starting material and a large number of possibilities as, an, as a, as a, as a uh, product phase, so one can ask the, question, the following question, how can we explore the ensemble of this large number of uh, candidate structures and get the real one in a reasonable and a more efficient way? Fortunately, we have a method called transition path sampling. And this this method has been designed mainly to study um, uh, phase transition of first order kinetics, meaning that in order to switch from phase A to phase B, we have to cross a, a very high activation energy. So this method allows in the situation where we have like many possibilities, more than you count, to transform from A to B, to help you to converge directly to the, uh, to the real transition mechanism without going through all different possibilities. So the basic idea comes from standard Monte Carlo procedures. So imagine that you have a system and you would like to get his most favorable configuration for a given ensemble of atoms. So you can explore the space of configuration and you bias, you bias your, your exploration of this space to the uh, configuration energy in order to converge directly to the, to the results wanted here and don't wander in the whole space because it's, 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 it's complex and large. So in this case, in um, transition path sampling, instead using uh, making the, the, the random walk in the space of configuration, here we perform the walk in the space of pathways. And we, we bias the, the, uh, the, the search here to the path weight in order to converge quickly to the, uh, to the real transition mechanism. But while here one can ask a, a very good question that like the method requires that the starting and the ending uh, phase A and B are known. However, here in our case, we would like to explore the energy landscape of superhard graphite. The endpoint phase is what we would like to know here. So we are going to use the following procedure. So instead of starting from A to a known B, we can start from a less likely or less probable path starting from a graphite. And here we can take the, 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 the path from graphite to a cubic or hexagonal diamond. We know that this transition take, takes place at high temperature. So if we are going to perform our simulation at ambient temperature, we are not only going to optimize the, uh, the transition route, but we are going also to optimize the end point because diamond in its, its cubic or hexagonal form is less likely to form at 300 Kelvin. So let's see right now this strategy at work. We have here snapshots from our first transition regime. You have the graphite on one side and the final product, which is diamond. And you have like the, 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 the progress of the transition. You can see the formation of uh, first some bonds uh, linking the, uh, the layers and its propagation into co uh, complete conversion of uh, graphite into diamond. On further sampling of this pathway, we have observed that the transition regime shifts from the initial end, which was diamond, and right now we observe the formation of an inset of new structural patterns, which are made of five membered rings and seven membered rings. On further sampling and optimizing this, uh, uh, this transition, we can see that the endpoint shifts completely to a different structure. And by looking at it and identifying it, we can see that it's the M carbon. Well, if you make a ranking, uh, energy ranking or enthalpy ranking of different proposed candidates for this uh, super, super hard graphite, you can see that M carbon is not the most stable. So we have like the W carbon who, is, who has lower enthalpy at the transition pressure than M carbon. This can be explained by plotting the uh, variation of enthalpy along the transition. You can see that during the transition, the M carbon has the lowest activation barrier. That's why it's more favored to, 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 to be formed than other, other structures. And very recently, a group of uh, scientists uh, tried to repeat the, the, the experiment and to obtain high quality X-ray diffraction data 
and they could compare it with the proposed uh, different proposed polymorphs for this uh, superhead graphite and you can see that only M carbon especially for these two peaks here can match the experiment I would like to draw your attention if you would like more details information about this work to just go to our work just uh, published in scientific reports titled understanding the nature of superhead graphite and thank you for your attention